Let's raid all of the new cards and their impact on the game. Starting off with Dozy Welp, which is the new one drop dragon we got. Uh, I'm surprised that they put another one drop dragon in the pool without taking anything out of tier 1. So we have three dragons now in tier 1. Why? I'm not quite sure. Uh, but whenever this is attacked into, it gains plus 1 attack permanently. And it turns out that's pretty okay. It's just a fine taunt, decent taunt, decent triple. You just have a high attack taunt essentially. And it's a dragon and taunt comp is kind of a thing. So you could keep it around. You could go into full dragons and then find an Adina and this could get shielded. Then again, it is taunt so it can get sniped. It's just a nice one drop. I think it's about average. I'm going to give it three points. Don't think it's insane that you should stay down for it. I also don't think there's that many one drops that are more impactful than this. A quick break to tell you about the deck tracker that I've been using in all of my videos and also the sponsor of this video, Firestone. Firestone is completely free and it does basically anything that you wanted to do for better guns. From the normal stuff like seeing win percentages, tracking your opponent's boards, seeing what is in the lobby when it comes to tribes, being able to reposition your boards, re-simulate each fight from a previous battle so you can see all of your previous games and just completely overanalyze them. It tracks like how you're performance is over a while you can see well here at tier list you can see how your performance is on average with every hero uh, please check out the link in the description if you want to try it out i highly recommend it now onto the video now impatient scout i think this is one of the coolest neutrals that they have introduced it is a tier 2 1 1 neutral and this well obviously is an awful card you can't buff it you can't do anything with it if you sell it it's gonna discover a one drop so in itself it's just a token very often you can just buy sell this if you're let's say you're at five gold you can buy sell this and then buy another card in the shop so essentially just having a one drop and this guy and the one drop could be a token and then it's free so depending on the tribe in the lobby very often you can like cycle and patient scout get another salamantle or the coin naga or alley cat and then is it's literally free, uh, which is pretty cool. It has those applications, kind of like Tad, the, how Tad works, where you sell it the tier two Murloc and you get another Murloc in hand. But this has a huge benefit that it, it upgrades every turn. So from tier one, it goes to tier two, three, four, you get the picture. Uh, and this leads to some really cool strategies where you can just greed and keep this on the board until it is a five or a six drop. Again, you gotta be sacrificing health for this because you're playing with a 1-1 neutral. But when I was playing Reno, I found this card on turn 3. Uh, I just know I'm gonna get a golden six drop sooner or later. And that game was just complete high roll. I just got a golden this early enough. I just stayed down, played tempo so I didn't die. Uh, it's just a guarantee almost on, on any hero really that you're gonna discover higher tier cards. Where previously you had to just rely on triples or on leveling aggressively. So it's cool design, it does add on to the high roll of this meta, we see so many early 5 and 6 drops right now where, you know, there's not much to do, there's just many ways of you to cheat out higher tier cards right now, uh, as we will see in a, in a bit as well, there's a new card that does exactly that, but I like the design, it can function as a token or as something that you greed into direction. Another thing to note is that uh, I just often cycle it when, for example, I have a quest that I gotta play Battle Cries, I know there's a bunch of Battle Cries on tier 1, or a bunch of tokens, and, uh, or I need to play, let's say, elementals, whatever. This will very often just give you a discover of a one job that's going to help you progress your quest. So in that sense, uh, this also has been doing pretty well. This has to be a 5. Uh, I think this is just too good, too many applications, even though it's a 1-1 neutral, that it is one of the best cards I think we got introduced on tier 2. Like, this is the single reason why I would stay down on tier 2 or play a basic curve, uh, just because you have a chance of hitting this. Next up is the Bristleman Scrapsmith, which is just a tier 3 4 4 quill board that gives you a gem whenever a taunt dies. Uh, turns out it's just a way worse gem splitter. Gem splitter is just way more consistent, way better at getting you gems. You also want to play the Vinyl Combs. While taunt comes early on, kind of meh. This just hasn't seen as much play or doesn't seem that as, as strong as gem splitter was. Um, so I'm going to give it a free. It is still nice gem generation, it still has applications, but I've seen next to no Agam Menagerie comps anymore with this Quillbore in play. Mainly because there's also just much better scaling and much more scam in the game than ever before. But it, I don't think this is too spicy or exciting. It's a nice card to pick up early, let's say your power level, you hit a taunt in the shop and this guy, it's okay, you know, it's not bad. It's gonna generate you some gems. You can still make compositions with this, I'm not saying it's completely useless. It's just like average, kind of. A better tone color in a sense. Now onto Faceless Disciple, which is the neutral free drop. Uh, first of all, I want to point out that the stat line here is crazy. This is one of the biggest free drops you have. So even if this had no effect, you could just buy and play this just to survive fights. So that in itself is already kind of insane. But the, the battle cry effect it has 
is even more insane because it transforms a minion into one from a higher tier which can be both in the shop or on your board it does work with brands so you can just blow up i remember tripling into an early four drop i just took a battle cry four drop i think lookout or jug then i picked the faceless disciple turned it into a five drop so i had a super early five drop i got the battle cry effect from the four drop and i got a six four neutral which is just like it, it is so much tempo so i don't know why they put so much like uh, such a big neutral onto that battle cry because that battle cry already can be game changing now uh if you do just use it on a random card on your board it is pretty rng heavy sometimes you get like a baron or something useless that you don't really need on the board but sometimes it can be huge so again more randomness in the game or ways that you can cheat out higher tier cards but again you can also just use it on the shop see what you get offered and then choose to not take it if it's bad um because you're still playing a 6-4 that is fine it just has so many applications and it is also not really a bad card to play in most uh situations that your board is structured or the way the game is going if you, even if you're low on tempo you can just take this so yeah um i forgot if i rated this or not but i'm also going to give this a five we see a lot of new impactful cards introduced in the game that are quickly changing the play style of how to win battlegrounds lobbies vigilant stoneborn is a new way to gain taunt onto your four it is a neutral and i think it's pretty good because also the uh, health bonus very often i like taunting my leroy's so i would have a leroy then taunt it but then i would still have to buff up the health to play around tunnel blaster this does that for you smack it onto a leroy it has taunt and six health so suddenly you don't have to be worried about it losing to a selfless attacking in or a tunnel blaster uh, so the health bonus is pretty good i think i mean it's a two section neutral you don't really care too much about that stat line is pretty bad uh, but the plus six health is also very relevant on a lot of cards early on so if you hit this early it's not even bad tempo because let's say you're playing with a dragon that skills up attack early on the new one drop uh, this could help you, you know, value trade with it and it sets up for taunt comp again which is trying to resurrect right now uh, which i think has a good chance of winning lobbies but definitely decent card i would brand plus 12 health is not negligible it's pretty good i'm gonna give it a free it's again just a good battle cry that is nice when you need it and in the right situation but as a standalone card whatever ball of minions so this is why amalgam died it's basically a better amalgam even though it's on a higher tier it is a 5-5 five five that can be buffed from every source it can still be modulated, so it has a divine shield still be poisoned so you have a poison divine shield on tier 4 but when sold it spreads its stats onto well not spreads its stats it just put its stats onto a different unit now when it's golden it will split it onto two units so very often you're trying to just make a big ball trying to get it tripled and then you can sell it and have two cleaves on the board and tada you have two big hydras i've seen people play apm pirates just buff this up with their arms as big as possible then sell it off and play a board full of cleaves to try and just get one or two big extra cleaves next to their big pirates it gives you a better shot at the late game so lots of cool applications here it can also just be a standalone minion again you give poison and the vanish shield to just be on your board it's a nice card Again, more applications in Amalgam, more flexibility. It is now with your 4 though, but I don't think that matters too much. You could even just buy sell this to get plus 5, plus 5 on the board, which I do not really recommend, but there's a lot of quests that buff the shop. If your shop is buffed somehow, let's say you have Evil Twin, you know, it is uh, plus 7, plus 7 onto this. That is a lot of stats, plus 12, plus 12 that you're going to put onto another card. This definitely deserves a 4. I don't think it's quite game-breaking or it needs to be nerfed. Uh, but i think it is super impactful and this has again loads of applications that you will see used quite a lot interrogator wide main is the five drop neutral that is a big disruptor um, basically it at the start of combat gives the opposing minion taunt and take double damage now sometimes this is completely useless this has been played against me where it does pretty much nothing so it's it's a wasted board slot but this has also been played against me and completely destroy me because it got my baron when i was playing leapers but i didn't really play around it i forgot the card even existed it doesn't see as much play as i expected i thought it would completely warp the game and you would just see this in every end game but it's really dependent on the kind of opponent you're facing uh, when you're facing like a uh, mech omega buster baron comp or leapers or just beast in general uh this is a pretty good card to run but if you're facing a taunt comp or if you're facing i don't know apm pirates still the double damage is, is huge but there's a lot of comps where this is not that great against uh, you rather just run a leroy or a mantid queen because that could be more impactful now one thing i will point out as well is you can just put this in the middle of the board and then lead with a big hydra or a big wildfire or something to try and disrupt just their board people are very careful with taunt most of the time you just have like one divine shield taunt in the back or something to play around cleaves now you pretty much can never guarantee you play around cleave 
um, because white main is in the game. So I haven't seen it be super toxic. Uh, I've seen it disrupt combos for sure, which is what it's meant to do. It's just almost impossible to play around, which is very sad. Like Leroy, you can kind of play around, you can play Blaster. If they buff their Leroy, you can play small taunts. Against Matted Queen, you can also kind of play around. This thing you just cannot play around because even if you miss position, you just make yourself so much weaker and this could still be impactful. Yeah, I'm gonna... I don't even know who I want to rate this. I'm gonna give it a 2 right now because most of the time it's just not good, but it can just be a, a 5 or a 6 instantly and just solo win you the game. I think it's just a toxic chord. Vanessa Van Cleave is a 5 drop 3 7 pirate. I don't really know why they introduced this, because we already have two pirates on tier 5, which is Hogar and Tony. Now we have another one, and for this they took out a 6 drop nosy looter. Uh, so we now only have Eliza on 6. And this is basically Eliza, but it permanently buffs your board. But this is also the only thing that would have to attack to buff your board. Your other pirates don't count, because it gets plus 2, plus 1 onto other pirates permanently whenever it attacks. I don't like it. I've not seen it being played much. I don't like playing it. You don't really care for plus 2, plus 1 on your pirates every turn. It seems very mediocre. Um, and just kind of not really what anyone asked for. So I, I'm gonna give it a 1. Which might be too bad, like it, it is still probably good tempo if you triple into this early, nice. But this is not a composition that you're gonna be playing, I think. This will never go into the late game. This is just like something you slap on the board when you find it and it works out, but not something you keep around. And now we have arrived at the Walking Fort, which is the new neutral 6 drop 4-6 that buffs your taunts or 4 taunts on your board, plus 4 plus 4 at the end of turn, which I think is super sick. It also works with the Ghastly Mask quest that end of turn uh, double triggers, so it, you can also get this as a reward from it. And I think it's really cool. It is very impactful scaling, I've seen it go into the late game, I've played it myself, uh, but max with literally anything, you can stunt whatever. It is on the slower end compared to, let's say, compositions that scale with Bran or Murlocs or Elementals, so you will not win the very late game against heroes that scale actively, but it's a nice tempo boost if you hit it early, you could still pivot. I've seen a lot of people play um, Timon, the 6 drop um, neutral, that was menagerie cards with neutrals uh, being played with forts. So lots of cool hybrids that you can go into. I very often just play a random taunt comp, put this on the board for a couple turns for scaling, then go into mandate queens and things like that. The so flexible, better kind of light fang on six i'm gonna give it a four i don't think i can give it a five with good consciousness i know it is just like taunts are easy to counter with leroy already so it's not quite as good as all of the top tier scaling but it's fun to play with for now lots of people are still experimenting and i would say give it a go it doesn't insta lose you the game which is nice for a new neutral six drop if you found this useful in some way then don't forget to leave the video a like or subscribe if you're new and if you haven't yet seen the quest uh, I made this video yesterday, so go check it out.